I spent my recent years working as an innovation consultant, being one of those guys who runs around in sneakers and t-shirts and always talks about innovation tools, frameworks and processes. But you rarely or almost never talk about the mindsets of great innovators. Because it seems to be the conviction of the consulting industry that you cannot teach and vice versa learn mindsets. But in this video I will talk about the five mindsets of great innovators because I believe that everybody can change his or her mindsets. The first mindset is, there is always someone who knows more than I do. Yes, there is this big misconception that an innovator is a loner, someone who sits alone in his underground lab with no windows, no sunlight and definitely no other people. The main culprits for this misconception are the innovators themselves, because many of them publicly claim that they invented everything by themselves. While this is a bias that I will explore in later videos, for the moment just believe me that history tells a very different story. For example, the invention of the computer was a huge collaboration between multiple people as Walter Isaacson points out in his book Innovators. The Bell Lab, where the transistor was invented, housed 6000 researchers in total and consisted of multiple buildings connected through long corridors to promote random meetings between people from different departments. A hundred years earlier, Charles Babbage, who invented the difference engine, an early predecessor of the computer, was organizing weekly saloons to facilitate exchange, similar to today's meetups. Many people would assume that the great Leonardo da Vinci was developing most of his brilliant ideas alone, just by thinking, tinkering, drawing and writing. Instead, as we can see here in a translation of one of his to-do lists, he was meeting quite a lot of people. So actually he was going out to learn from other experts. So it seems like collaboration and exchange is not only important in our complex world today, it always was. And the next mindset is be fanatic about what you do. Yes, this sounds a bit extreme and it can definitely lead to an unhealthy lifestyle. And it's probably also one of the biggest downsides of being a great innovator. But typically the intrinsic motivation of innovators is so high that they find it difficult to stop working on their ideas. For example, it is said that Leonardo da Vinci slept only 20 minutes every 4 hours, which led to a total time of 2 hours of sleep per day. It's also said that Bill Gates in his 20s when he and Paul Allen started Microsoft was coding quite often 30 hours straight until he collapsed on his desk. And it's also no secret that Elon Musk still has a crazy work schedule, managing two companies, Tesla and SpaceX at the same time and working about 80 hours per week. So being an innovator is definitely not a 9 to 5 job. This could wrongly suggest that these innovators had their best ideas while working long hours on the problems. But this is not true. The most important ideas, those breakthroughs, are typically developed in moments of not working or while doing monotonous tasks. Because innovators are working like crazy, their brains just never stops working. Einstein, who loved playing the violin in his spare time, once said, A new idea comes up suddenly, in a rather intuitive way. But intuition is nothing but the outcome of earlier intellectual experience. It means that you are using your subconscious mind to solve puzzles that your conscious mind, while actively thinking about them, cannot solve. So keep in mind that your breakthrough ideas will probably not come up during your work, but rather after work while taking a shower or playing the violin. So the next mindset is don't be a nerd. Einstein was not the only innovator who had a love for music. Innovators make unique connections and therefore they need what is called deep and broad knowledge. It is no secret that Leonardo da Vinci was not only an astonishing painter and artist, but also a brilliant scientist and inventor. While many people think that the age of universal geniuses is over, a combination of deep and broad knowledge is actually still one of the keys to become a successful innovator. And it seems like a combination of knowledge in both natural science but also in arts and humanities is most beneficial, as psychologist Adam Grant points out in his book Originals. In this book, 
He is mentioning a study conducted by researchers from Michigan State University, who analyzed Nobel Prize winners of the last 100 years. The study shows that scientists have a seven times higher likelihood to win a Nobel Prize when they are also engaging in other avocations such as arts and crafts, compared to other scientists in their field of research. In fact, the likelihood was even 22 times higher when the scientists were active in performing arts such as dancing, acting or playing an instrument. In other words, scientists who only develop a deep knowledge in their field of expertise have a very limited chance to become extraordinary scientists due to their lack of broad knowledge in other areas. Galileo Galilei, who first discovered that the moon is a round object, was only able to see this through his telescope because he also was a painter using the chiaroscuro painting technique. Because he was a painter, he was familiar with reflections and shadows. The telescope that he used back in the 17th century to look at the moon actually didn't have the sufficient resolution to see the moon as a round object with all its craters and mountains. His advantage, in other words, compared to other astronomers at the time, was that he was also a painter and therefore it helped him to make unique connections, in this case to interpret darker areas of the moon as shadows. Back in 1995, Elon Musk got his dream job, a PhD position at Stanford, that allowed him to research storage technologies for electric vehicles. Nevertheless, he decided to drop out of university and leave Stanford just two days later, because he realized that he is missing out on the internet revolution that is happening at the same time. He then started a zipline company, uh, sorry, a software company that produced digital city guides and the company was called Zip2 and was sold just four years later for 305 million US dollars to Compaq. In the mid 70s, Bill Gates and his friend Paul Allen strongly felt that the personal computer revolution is happening without them. And at this time, Bill Gates was still a student at the prestigious Harvard University. In 1975, Paul Allen eventually convinced Bill Gates to drop out of Harvard and start Microsoft instead, together with him. While I think this skill to have the feeling for the right zeitgeist and seeing this window of opportunity is difficult to learn, I suspect that the more crucial part is to act on that feeling, because this needs courage. And therefore, you should train your courage muscle and give less about what other people are thinking. And this brings us directly to the last mindset. Have the courage to think differently. Successful innovators typically don't pay much attention to what other people say. And therefore, you also shouldn't care too much about what your parents say, what your friends say, and even what some experts say about your idea. But this doesn't mean that you should not listen to other people. Jia Zhang, the author of the book Rejection Proof, did a 100 days of rejection challenge. One of the biggest insights he gained during this challenge was that whenever somebody rejects your idea, first ask why. Maybe it has nothing to do with you or your idea. Second, improve it. Ask the person what do you need to change in order to make it better. And third, make the people who re reject your idea initially to collaborators by asking them how they would use your innovation or how they would use your idea. And fourth, if you cannot convince them, use their rejection as a motivation to pursue your idea anyway. And that's it. These are the five mindsets of real innovators. But knowing about those mindsets is worth nothing as long as we don't apply them. And therefore, the big question is how can we change our mindsets? So here are three tips in order to apply what we've just learned. First, and this is actually not about changing mindsets, this is more a quick fix. Find a partner, build a team. When you found a company, building the right team is crucial. But it's not only about the skill sets, it's also about your character traits and your mindsets that have to be compatible. It's important to understand that one person alone does not have to unite all the mindsets. Second, in order to change your mindsets, you need to leave your comfort zone. The author Jia Zhang did this 100 days of rejection challenge to become rejection proof. This is critical, not only 
when you want to ask other people for advice. This is also critical in moments when you are the only person in the world who still believes in your idea. And it's even more important in moments when you decide to quit your safe job or to drop out of university. And to make the decision to quit your job or to drop out of university before you have ever trained your courage muscle is like trying to bench press 100 kilograms before you have ever tried push-ups. But how can you train your courage muscle? The answer is every social situation that scares you a little bit can serve as a courage muscle exercise. I'm going to ask someone to open up their backyard and for me to play soccer in it. And uh, we'll see what happens. Playing soccer in my backyard? Yeah, it's for a special project. I guess so. Are you sure? Wow, okay. <laughs> I didn't expect you to say yes. Okay, can you just take a picture for me? I'll, I'll give you my phone and I'll just take a picture and you... Okay. That sound good? All right, wow. Third. It's important to have deep knowledge in one domain. Actually, it's necessary for many innovations. But you should always follow your interests, even your interests are totally unrelated to your field of expertise. Maybe you have always been interested in arts or philosophy or dancing, and you always thought it's a waste of time. The good news is, it's not. It might give you the competitive edge to make unique connections nobody else did before. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, please click the like button and leave in the comments what you think are the most important mindsets of great innovators. And if you want to learn more about impact innovation, please subscribe to my channel.